Pydantic is hands down the best data validation library in Python. No debate there. And the great news, it's constantly evolving with regular updates to make it even better. But here's something that no one saw coming, or maybe it's just me who didn't see it coming, but the Pydantic team, an entirely new data validation framework called Pydantic AI. So what's that all about? Well, if you're a Python developer, and if you've clicked on this video, chances are you are, you've probably run into challenges with data validation when working with generative AI applications. Now, before you tune out thinking this video doesn't apply to me, hold up, I'd recommend sticking around because this video is not too long, but it's packed with something new and incredibly useful for validating gen AI models. And let's be honest, these AI models aren't going anywhere, so you probably wanna learn how to do data validation on them. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I have helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. So what is Pydantic AI? Well, Pydantic AI is a new Python agent framework built by the creators of Pydantic. It is designed to simplify the development of production grade generative AI applications. Pydantic AI is built by the same team that built Pydantic and it is model agnostic, meaning that it works with validating different type of models like OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini, and pretty much all the other models. Now, one of the coolest features is the validation of a structured response, meaning you can literally make sure your response has certain inputs when needed. Now, this feature is actually like really cool, but it's easier to show in a coding example. So first hit that subscribe button. And now let's go ahead and jump into some code. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new project for us to be able to use our Pydantic AI framework for artificial intelligence. So I already have in my .env file, my open AI API key. Now, if you want to follow this perfectly, you have to be using open AI because we're going to be using the open AI, open AI model in Pydantic AI, but it can work with any other model. But just for this example, we are going to be using open AI. Now, the very first thing we are going to do is head over to database.py and I am going to add some SQL Alchemy stuff. So I'm gonna say from create engine or declarative base and session maker. Here, we are simply just going to be creating a SQLite 3 database where we're gonna have an engine, a session local and base declarative base. If you don't know what this stuff is doing, I have like a hundred videos on my channel that kind of goes through SQL Alchemy database stuff. So let's go ahead and with that, let's just install SQL Alchemy here. So we can do that by saying pip install SQL Alchemy. All right, and now once you install SQL Alchemy, all these lines will go away eventually. And there they go. Now, the next thing we're gonna do for our SAS product is let's go into our models and create models for our database. We're gonna define the user model. We're gonna have this database table be called users, or we're gonna have an ID, which is gonna be the primary key, a name, account status, and subscription plan. So account status is gonna be like, is it active or locked? And then subscription plan is free, pro, and enterprise. Now let's go ahead and jump into our seed.py. This is where we are just going to be populating the database. So here we can see that we're saying from models import user, we're going to import our database stuff, we're going to create the table and database if it doesn't already exist, and then we're going to seed the database. So what we're doing right here is check if the data already exists. So if we run this one time, it won't just keep running over and over again, we're not gonna have a bunch of the same users. But if it doesn't exist, we're gonna add three different users, Alice, Bob, Charlie, which all three have different account statuses. So active, locked, active, and pro plan, free plan, and enterprise plan with three different IDs. So we can test against each ID and each user. We're gonna print database seeded successfully or it's already seeded, we're just gonna skip it. And then we're just gonna make sure that we run the file. So with that, let's go ahead and just say Python or Python three if you're on Mac, seed.py. All right, and here we can see database seeded successfully. And if we open up our directory, we can see support DB right here. So we have in fact added these three users into our SQLite database. All right, so now that we have our models database and all that connected, let's go ahead and look at our agents. Now our agents is going to be like the root of our Pydantic AI framework. It's going to be where we can set up almost like we can set up system responses saying, hey, you need to include this criteria when you're responding to a user. 
user. And it makes it completely different than like just using OpenAI or something like that by itself, because we are systematically saying you need to return these pieces of data to help the user based on X criteria. So really helpful, but let's see it in action. Now, the very first thing we need to do is just install Pydantic AI. So we can say pip install Pydantic dash AI. All right, so now the very first thing we're gonna do is let's just go ahead and just do the imports that don't have to deal with Pydantic AI. So we're gonna be importing a data class because we're gonna be creating a class called database connection. We're gonna have a database models and our context lib context manager to handle our sessions for our database. So right here, we can add our decorator for context manager called get session where we create a new session, yield that session until we don't need it anymore. And then we can just finally close it. And then we're going to create a new class for our database connection. So we can just go ahead and say class database connection. And then inside here, we are going to add in some class methods. So our first class method is simply just going to be like, hey, fetch the username. And we're all we're always going to be using async. So our whole application is going to be running asynchronously. So using asyncio. So make sure that you have that. So def username, we just have our class, we're forcing the ID parameter and then saying ID needs to be an integer with our session, which is right here, we're going to return a username, same thing right here, but instead of username, we're going to get account status. And then right here, we're going to be using our subscription plan. Perfect stuff. Now with that, we can finally get to the Pydantic AI stuff. So we have our context manager, our database connection, and now we're ready to go with Pydantic AI. And I'm going to make a couple lines right here. Now, the very first thing that we need to do is go ahead and add our data class for our support dependencies, which is going to be the user ID and database connection. That is going to be the dependencies that we need for our Pydantic AI to work correctly. So we're going to be like, hey, before we can use Pydantic AI's agents, we need to make sure that we collect this information about the request, which is the user ID and the database connection. The next thing that we're going to be adding is our support role or our support results, which is going to be the support advice. And this is where we have to pass in some important information. So we're going to explain to the user what their issue is. So advice returned to the user. And then we need to notify if we need to escalate this to admin. So we can say whether to escalate the query to an admin, which is going to be a Boolean. So yes or no. And then we're going to make a prediction on what the risk level of this query is. So if this is like a SaaS product and we're saying, hey, my account is blocked for some reason and I am an enterprise pro user, it's going to escalate to admin being like, hey, this enterprise user who's paying us money's account is blocked. So we're going to say true right here. Our risk level might be a little bit higher, it might not be a 10, like my account is hacked, but it might be like an eight. And then advice will be like, hey, try and change your password. Have you done anything? Maybe contact your support. It's going to give us advice, block or escalate to user. So it's true. And then the risk level. And then we need to import normal Pydantic stuff. So base model and field. So right here, we can just go ahead and say from Pydantic import base model and field. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually create the agent that is going to be handling the dependencies. So what we push the dependencies in, and then that's going to be handling the response. And like I said in the beginning, we're going to be using open AI to do this as the model. And then we are configuring the model to send back specific responses to the user. So here we can say our support agent. So we're naming it support agent is going to be an agent of Pydantic AI using the open AI company. So it needs to be like the company or the name of it. So it'd be like Gemini and then the model involved. So right here, I'm going to be using GPT-4.0. We need to pass in our dependency type. So we're going to be passing in our support dependencies, which means we need, that means this agent needs a user ID and database connection because it's going to contact our database, get the information based on the user ID so they know what user we're dealing with. What type of results we want to give back which is going to be this right here. So we need to give it the support advice, the escalate to admin in the risk level. And then we need to add a system prompt. So the model knows what its job is to do. So it's going to be your SaaS support agent, help users with their accounts, check subscription plans and determine if their query should be escalated to an admin. So essentially we're just saying what these three things are. And this agent is the first thing from Pydantic AI. So we can say from Pydantic AI, we need to import agent. So this is great stuff so far. 
Now, this system prompt is static, right? We probably want to make it a little bit more dynamic in some way. So what we can do is adjust the system prompt dynamically by adding in the user's username. So the, it doesn't know the username until it queries the database, right? So here we can say, hey, we want to add our decorator of our support agent and we are going to configure the system prompt. We're going to add the surname or the username. And what we're doing here is we're going to say, hey, in this context of our wrong context, which we need to import in a second, we are going to be passing in our support dependencies. So we're going to be passing in the ID and the database. So then we can say, fetch the username. We're going to await the context dependencies DB. So we're calling the database. We're fetching the username based on the ID. And then we're going to return the user's name is the username. So we're configuring the system prompt to now know the username, the individual calling this application. And we need to import run context. So up here, we now need to say, hey, we want to import run context. Now we can also adjust uh, some more things. So we can say at support agent dot tool, where we are going to check the account status where we can pass in the context of the support context and we're going to return the user's account status. So now we can say the status equals await context of our account status where we pass in the user ID so we can fetch the status of the user. And we're going to say your account is currently blank. So if we go back and we look at our seed, we can see the information that's getting passed in. So the name, the account status and the subscription plan, right? So we're checking out the account status right now. Cool. So we're fetching the account status and then returning that. And then lastly, we're going to be doing one more, which is just to check the subscription plan. So we know if the account is active or not. And then we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing to check the subscription plan. So we are saying, hey, support agent, when you get whatever query we pass in, we want you to answer like this using this extra information that we just grabbed from our database. So we're merging the database with the OpenAI model a little bit to get a fixed response. And this is where Pydentic AI is really doing its magic, a fixed response for specific areas. So let's see how this will actually look. If we go into our main.py and we just add some things in, we can see that we're going to do query one, which is subscription plan. So we're going to say async def test support agent. We are going to be passing in our support dependencies, which is going to be user 103 and database connection. So if we go back in here and we look at our seed, user 103 is going to be Charlie. The account is active and it's going to be the subscription plan. And we'll be able to see what the results are. So let's go ahead and run this application. We can say python3 main.py. And here's our response. Support advice. Your current subscription plan is the enterprise plan. If you have any further questions or need additional assistance, feel free to ask. We want to escalate it to no admin and the risk tolerance is a zero because we're simply asking, what is my subscription plan? Well, we know in the database that the subscription plan for Charlie is enterprise plan and the account status is active. Now, what do you think would happen if we just redid this exact question, but made it like a little bit more weary, right? Like the account is active and it's the enterprise plan. Like, I think I have been hacked. I said, I have been hacked, I cannot sign in. Let's run and see what it tells us this time. Your account status is active, which is a good sign that it hasn't been disabled or tampered with in any way. However, since you cannot sign in and suspect a hack, I recommend immediately initiating a password recovery process if you haven't already. Simultaneously, check your email for any suspicious activity related to your account. Due to the sensitivity of this concern being related to your security and your enterprise plan, it's best to escalate this to an administrator for further investigation and assistance. So uh, escalate to admin is true, and the risk level is now an eight. So this is like super cool stuff. Like Pydantic is allowing, or Pydantic AI is making sure that we are getting three responses and it's doing this part. And it's all happening like behind scenes and it's being so specific. So like, for example, if we just switch this to, let's switch it to another user.
Let's do Bob. Bob's locked out of his account. Let's see what Bob has to say. Bob is locked out. We'll ask him, why is my account locked for Bob? And you can see that it's now fetching the user, it's fetching the database, and it's just figuring out information. So support advice, your account is currently locked. Unfortunately, I cannot provide specific details on why your account is locked. To resolve this, this situation, I recommend contacting our support team for further assistance. They'll be able to investigate the issue, blah, blah, blah. So escalate to admin and the risk level is seven. And that's because the bot doesn't know why the account's locked and, and these aren't real people. I just stuck it in there. But yeah, Pydantic AI is a pretty sweet data validation framework for LLMs if you're into that kind of stuff. So hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next.